This is Matthew from Mini Wargaming, and welcome back to another edition of Tyranid Tactica. Or is it Tyranids Tactica? We work to play Tyranid Tactica. In today's video, we're going to cover the heavy support choices, or you know, choice, whatever. However you look at it, I really look at it as a choice because there's only one that I like. But we'll get into that here are the heavy support choices that I have had experience with. We have the Trigon, and also the Moloch that I've played with, the Carnifexes, and Old One-Eye, the character Carnifex, and Biovores. I haven't really used the Tyranifex, so I can't really comment on that one. However, I can comment on everything else. The Trigon is a good staple. It's, for its points value, it's good. Unfortunately, it's not great, but it does fill the role of heavy support. I never deep strike him, even though he doesn't mishap, he just dies too easily when he deep strikes. Instead, I'll use him to either sh cover, give cover to all my other units, or I'll hold him back so he can be the second wave. But usually he'll be the guy that's out front, because if he dies, that means he's taking a lot of fire, and my Hormagons and Gene Slayers can get in. If he doesn't die, then he will do a lot of damage. He has a lot of attacks, and he's got a decent strength at strength six, and because he's a monstrous creature, he is good at killing vehicles. Even land raiders can't really stand up to a charge from a Trigon. There aren't really any upgrades that I give him except for becoming a Trigon Prime. The reason to give him Trigon Prime is twofold. One, it doubles the number of shooting attacks that he has, and two, it gives him the Synapse ability, which allows him to provide Synapse to the models around him. So I pretty much never bring a Trigon unless I upgrade it to a Trigon Prime. Other than that, I find that he is semi-effective with his shooting. He only, he only hits on a 4+, plus, but a Trigon Prime does get 12 shots, all strength 5, and so he's a good light vehicle destroyer. Uh, he's not really good at medium vehicles, and he's definitely not good at heavy vehicles except in close combat. But then again, close combat against vehicles is difficult, because most of the time they move, which makes them harder to hit. I have heard some people give the tactic of deep striking the Trigon in behind enemy lines so that he has rear armor shots but he only gets to shoot at one vehicle, and if he's shooting at something with a rear armor of 10, most likely it's not a vehicle that's valuable. And since he's 200 points minimum without upgrades, he's gonna get shot down quite easily. He is not difficult to kill. He only has a three plus save, and his toughness is simply six, like other, every other monstrous creature. He does have six wounds, which allows him to last longer, but I haven't seen that really matter that much. Regeneration also seems to be a useless upgrade, because for the most part, if they're gonna try to kill the Trigon, they're going to kill it in one or two rounds. And you have to roll six to regenerate wounds, so it seems a bit of a waste of points. Unless you have an extra 25 points, you don't know what to do with. The Moloch version, I've had even less success with. He's able to deep strike immediately into enemies. You're actually allowed to choose to have him deep strike into enemies, and they suffer the, the blast um, hit, and then they have to move out of the way. And so that seems like it'd be effective, except that's really all he does. So overall, the Moloch does not seem to be worth bringing into the game at all. Our next choice is Carnifexes, which is the most disappointing of all the choices. In fourth edition, Carnifexes were awesome. Now, mind you, they were probably a little overpowered, but not so much because of how strong they were, but because you could bring so many of them into the game. In fourth edition, you could bring six Carnifexes. You could bring three heavy support Carnifexes, and if you made them cheap enough, you could bring three elite Carnifexes as well. Now, in the fifth edition, they have had uh, a couple major nerfs. The most major being their points have gone up quite a bit. They're 160 points base without any upgrades. Now they're slightly better than the unupgraded Carnifex from 4th edition and that they get to keep all their four attacks even if you get rid of their Scything Talons, but they're just not effective, especially because the Heavy Barb Strangler is only strength six instead of strength eight like it used to be. They took away pretty much one of the most effective shooting, carnif or shooting units in all of the Tyranid Codex, because you could have a nice 120 point Carnifex with a Barb Strangler which shot a nice large strength eight blast. It was quite effective against troops and against multi-wound toughness four creatures such as knobs in the, orc, in the orc army. But what are you gonna do? Well, what I do is I don't even bother with Carnifexes. On top of that, for only a few points more, for 200 points, you get a Trigon, which, while it doesn't have the same strength as a Carnifex, has six wounds instead of just four, and overall is faster and more effective than Carnifexes. So my advice with Carnifexes is don't bother unless you're just doing a friendly game. If you're trying to play competitively, I have never seen them used effectively. They die too easy, and they're too expensive. 
And of course we have the character version of the Carnifex, which is Old One-Eye. Now he is even more ridiculously expensive than a Carnifex and even more ridiculously useless. However, he is also very, very powerful. I bring him in for fun because he, if he gets into close combat, which is hard because he's so slow, he will destroy over and over again at strength 10 and getting his um, extra D3 attacks and then getting his extra attacks whenever he scores hits um, he does get extra attacks so I've seen him get as high as 15 attacks in one run because when he charges in and he gets the extra attacks and D3 attacks extra and then extra on top of that he just piles on the attacks and, and is quite powerful at strength 10 and um, he's also difficult to kill because he has a 5 plus regeneration but He's still not worth it for his points cost. So bring him in for fun, but don't bring him in competitively. Lastly, we have Biovores. Biovores are okay. They're reliable. They fire their spore mines. If they hit, they do nice large strength four blasts. If they miss, then they leave spore mines, which distract or destroy enemies. Overall, you don't see me play them very much because they just, they, I'd rather put those points into zone thropes or hive guard or something else they're just overall not very effective at anything they're not good at killing vehicles uh, because they're only strength four and they're not very good at killing troops because they're only strength four ap4 most things have a three plus better save and if they don't have a three plus or better save then you know killing a few of them is not a big deal so biovores are not very expensive but I don't usually try, I don't usually bring them in just because they're kind of useless. It would be interesting to see somebody bring in three groups of three Biofors. That might be effective, being able to fire nine of the spores in one turn. And they don't have to have line of sight to whatever they're firing at, which is of course nice. And they've been upgraded so that they can move and fire, whereas in 4th edition they couldn't. They were the only heavy weapon in all the Tyranus Codex. So that's all the heavy support options that I have used in my games. Really the only one I use is a Trigon. I'll usually bring one or two Trigons into the game for no other reason than to provide cover for the rest of my army. And if they don't fire at him, then he can provide some very, very heavy support. No pun intended. Now for our next video, not quite sure what it's going to be. So it's not right there yet. I need your questions so I can determine what I'm going to cover. I will be covering things such as army lists and also specific strategies like how to counter certain types of vehicles and certain types of armies. But go ahead and post a comment below what you want me to cover in these Tyranid tactics so that I can continue to make this series. And of course subscribe so you know when I put up the next video. And like this video, share it on Facebook, tweet it, whatever you can do to help spread the word to help support Mini Wargaming. This is Matthew from Mini Wargaming. Happy Wargaming.